LinkedIn is a magical place. It is often mocked as reverse Tinder because attractive girls DM tech guys and they basically ignore them. It is also home to the posts where someone writes along the lines of this. I was walking to my interview and I gave a homeless dog some water on the street. When I went into my interview, guess who was the interviewer? The dog. It is also one of the most wholesome platforms. Literally it's the opposite to TikTok. I'm not even kidding. You could even write something like, I got eight hours sleep and you will be inundated with thousands of likes and hundreds of comments. So. That basically summarized LinkedIn. Thanks for watching a bit, no, I'm kidding. However, as much as I like to mock the platform, it does has its upside for students and young professionals who've just graduated. So here's my tutorial about how you can utilize LinkedIn the best. So here we have the best LinkedIn profile ever. And this was actually conducted by a survey this morning with a sample size of one person, which, which was me, but we move. So let's take a look at why this profile here in front of me is the best profile on LinkedIn. Okay, so let's just start from the top and work our way down on this profile. So as you can see on this profile, there's a very clear banner that sort of tells you your name and my interests and also what I am. So yes, I am an engineering graduate. I do need to update it though because I have just started to work. So yeah, that's something I need to do. Your profile picture. A good picture basically is something that is clear, shows your face, doesn't have anyone else in the picture and also has a clean background as well because you don't want a, a busy background for your profile picture. So something like what I have there is great and I recommend using Canva as a tool if you want to edit your pictures because it's super easy and quick to edit photos on there than Photoshop. Next up is your, whatever this is called, I think it's called a title. Let me just check. It is, no, your headline. Your headline, yes. So your headline should basically represent you in a few words. So in essence, what I have here is I'm a graduate software engineer at Accenture and I have a first class MEng aerospace engineering degree. So that basically summarizes me in a professional way. Um, I'm yet to put YouTuber because I need to get a thousand subscribers for me to personally class myself as a proper YouTuber. So you know what to do. And then on this other side over here, I have where I'm currently working and where I did study. And underneath here, I think it's important to put your location as well, because if you are connecting to people within a certain location and you want to meet them in person, then uh, if they see you're also in the same area, then they're more likely to accept. So then underneath here, this is just all my metrics of who's viewed my profile, who's viewed my recent posts and so on. And even LinkedIn, see, even LinkedIn knows that I'm an all star. So there you go. That's why you should listen to me about LinkedIn. Anyway, moving on. So next we have the about section. So this is where you can really summarize who you are, um, what kind of things you enjoy doing and so on. Um, I'd say if you are looking for a job, then definitely make this uh, more in detail about your skills, your experiences and so on, because that way recruiters and other people can have a more in-depth view of who you are as a person. Um, because I'm not really looking for a job right now, I just sort of have bullet points of, you know, similarly to what I listed in my headline, but what I'm currently doing, what I studied, and some other information just about me, which is me making YouTube videos for people who want to do engineering. So there you go. Next up is your experience. So you do list your experience very similarly to your CV, where you have your most recent experience on top and your older experiences further down. So for me, um, my main like work experience, like where I got paid properly is this one here pretty much. So the other stuff are things I did in university. Apart from this one, this was me also doing some freelancing where I did get paid. But majority of my experience has just been through student projects and so on. So if you are in university, then I'd strongly recommend putting the project you've worked on in your LinkedIn profile as experience because it all matters, especially when someone's trying to understand who you are as a person and what sort of skill sets you actually have. So if you go into one of these experiences, let's have a look at this one, Project Sunby. This is one of the main projects I worked on whilst at uni. So I sort of summarize what I did, what my main role was, and also some of the things I achieved. It's more important to put what you achieve rather than just simply what you did because a lot of people value results over anything else. I recommend doing that for all of your experiences or at least 
as many as you can. Um, like me, I've not written anything for my most recent experience because, well, I haven't actually got much to save right now. But when I start to properly get into my job, I'll be able to put stuff that I've uh, achieved, stuff I've learned, and also other things that you know will help another recruiter in the future identify as great skills and might want me to uh, join their company for a bit more moolah. Something else that makes your profile great is adding your education and also being quite detailed um, or not quite detailed but putting quite a bit of detail about what you're studying and some of the subjects that you've done. So what I've done here is I've sort of talked about the activities and societies that I've participated in whilst at university and also listed out the modules that I've done along with some of the grades that I've achieved. I've not put all the grades because I only want to highlight the, the best grades that I've got because why would you highlight the ones that you did shit on? But anyway, same here with my other university bit that I've done where I went on a study abroad year, so that's why I've put here. And if you go into and edit the university thing, this is where you can add your activities and societies. There's like a whole separate section there. Something else I think you should add as well are just pictures and images to your experiences. It basically gives a sense of uh, validity to what you're talking about because anyone could write stuff here but if you have pictures it, sure, it sort of shows you like that or shows the person reading it that there is some substance behind it and it, you actually did the stuff you're talking about. So if we move down to licenses and certifications, if you have done any certifications then I'd strongly say put it down because the more information you put out there to showcase what you've done, the better. For example, if you do certifications like this one here where I did a virtual program, um, I think it's on a website called uh, Forage, if you've heard of it, where you do like virtual internships sort of stuff, you can put like the the name of the certification, the organization, which company you did it with, um, and you can also put your credential ID and your credential URL. So for example, if someone wants to verify that you did do these certifications, they can click see credential and it opens up here and there you have it. That is evidence that you actually did that course. So I strongly recommend putting those down. So your volunteer experience is something that you can put down where you didn't get paid to work. However, I know what you guys are thinking. I put stuff up here where I didn't get paid to do the work. Yes, you can put it in either section, but I'd say if you did like traditional charity sort of work, put it in your volunteer experience. But if you did stuff related to say engineering projects and so on at university, then I'd say put it in your experience because that is more um, relevant to employers in the engineering field. Skills and endorsements. I think it's important to list as many skills as you have or you think you have. Other people will endorse your skills if they think you're good enough. So as you can see here, the top three skills that I've been endorsed for is leadership, engineering and teamwork. I think it's important to also do some of these skill exercises or skill tests should I say which give you this little um, badge next to your skills that just show that you are proficient in the skills and if a recruiter is trying to look at your profile from the recruiting end of LinkedIn they'll be able to identify okay this this person here actually knows what they're talking about so if you do want to do those skill quizzes you just have to click this take skill quiz and choose from whatever here so you could say do I don't know Microsoft Word and you basically have a specific time limit per question you have X number of multiple choice questions and you have to be in the top 30% to earn this badge sometimes this percentage varies it all depends I think on how many people have taken the test so then when you click start you have some time to finish the test and if you get above or within that percentage of people then you get the cool looking uh, tick here so you can verify your skills that way. As you can see, I am verified in uh, a number of these programming languages because I'm basically the brown Bill Gates, but without the money. Uh, and then you have your recommendations. So these, I think, are super important if uh, someone wants other people's opinions on you. Um, you can ask other people to verify, or not verify, but you can ask other people to write you recommendations. So if you want to ask your friends or people you've worked with for recommendations, you click ask for recommendation. You can search someone, so I'm gonna search my good friend Dan. So I can ask Daniel to recommend me. I can say like um, how I worked with him and so on. So then when I send him a request, he can then write me a recommendation, which he has here already. 
So now I'm able to showcase to other people that Dan recommends me in this sort of way. Moving on from there, now we have our accomplishments. So accomplishments are basically other stuff that are important but not as important as your work experience. So what we have here is you can list all the projects that you've worked on. So these are the various projects that I've uh, been involved with whilst at university. This one here in fact is my dissertation. Um, as you can see it is a mouthful of a title. So I'm not going to read it out right now because I'll probably trip over every other word that I'm saying but uh, you can try and make that into a tongue twister if you want. Um, and you can also put what languages you know. So for myself, I was born and raised in the UK so English is basically my native language I'd say. I know some Gujarati because that is basically my family's language but I don't know how to read or write it. I can only speak it. And when I speak Gujarati it's really broken up. So. That is that. Spanish, yeah, I learned this in school. I can kind of speak a bit of Spanish, so I stuck that in there as well. So in your organizations, what you can list is if you're part of like any of the um, engineering societies, so like Royal Aeronautical Society, uh, IMECI. Um, if you're into space and are based in the UK, UK SEDS is a great one to join as well. The other thing that I have is honors and awards. So these are just some random awards that I got during my time at university. This one I actually got at A-levels where we had to do this uh, UK maths challenge thing. And then underneath here, you can put any publications you have. I was very lucky to be one of the authors on a academic paper when I was in my second year where uh, I talked about basically our findings and learnings on a specific engineering project that I was working on at the time. So that's what uh, you can put here for publications. And overall, that's how I think you should format your LinkedIn. And also feel free to connect with me as well. I uh, accept pretty much everyone's connection request as long as their profile looks decent. If your profile looks slick and I'm able to tell who you are, what you're doing and so on, you know, I'm most probably going to accept you. In another video, I'm going to actually explain how you should try and connect with people and um, what you should do after that. So stay tuned, subscribe for that video. Thanks for watching this one and uh, glad you enjoyed the, the best LinkedIn profile available. I'll link the next video up here when it does get released. So when it does, you'll see it appear over here somewhere. Thanks for watching guys. See you around.